Well, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another garden tour. So, it is officially fall in the south, which means a November garden tour. A very late November garden tour because it just hasn't been closed this year. If you've been watching my recent videos, you know that I've been pulling summer annuals and popping in pansies and kales and cabbages. Hope you can hear me over the helicopter. If not, I suppose you're listening to a voiceover at school, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you a full view of the garden and everything we've been doing lately. Um, some things I look great, some not so great, that's the nature. We did not do a fall, winter to summer garden, or fall to winter garden. We mainly did this front area going up to the front walk with some pretty things and the rest of the garden will kind of go to sleep for the winter and that's perfect i'm never going to be a all year round gardener but we have a very long growing period in the south and we can grow things <coughs> excuse me with color in the winter months so why not take advantage of that we'll get started right up where y'all are because the pansies are the best in the entire garden, and then I will show you what else we're rocking. Let's do it. Ready, Ben? Let's go. All right, y'all. So before we go down the pretty pansy way, let's pivot and start over here. So a lot of my super tunias, half of them are doing great. The other half are done for the season. They are annuals, but they do come back in my zone. So we're just going to see which ones live and which ones don't. I don't know. But from there, the gumfrina is done for the season. I could cut it completely back, but I'm just going to leave it. It dries that pink color. So I think I'll leave it till spring and then cut it back. Um, some of my Laura Pedlum and the salvia, they're all done. My oak leaf hydrangea grew so much this year. I cannot wait to see it bloom next season. And then we come down to the shed. The shed is looking great. You can see all of my milk jugs over here. I want an update on those because I'm thinking most of them are doing just fine, trekking along. But honestly, y'all, the lupins are growing so fast that I am not 100% convinced I shouldn't go plant them out right now. Leave a comment down below and let me know. But here's all the babies. Look at this. Look at these lupins. Like they're plants already. <laughs> For reference, the foxgloves are tiny if they're there at all. So most of them are itty bitty little tiny baby plants, except the lupins that are going insane. So we'll see. Gardenia is going to sleep. Hydrangea that I thought was dead. It's not dead. There's always weeds over here. Never fails. Iris are irisin. This butterfly bush is looking okay. The one over here is looking dead. Might have to replace it. And then hydrangea on this side looks great. Rose on this side looks great. So, you know, my Peggy Martin rose looks great. I do need to cardboard all the way down here. And my milkweed plant that I finally got. I'm going to do this whole area in milkweed. And once I get a fence up around this, it'll be even better. But... Well, I was on my European cruise this summer. <laughs> I wasn't able to keep training my watermelon up, so it, it took over my whole area right now. I don't think I'm going to get to harvest any of these with the freeze coming, but we'll see. I got one. Not bitty. Yeah, we're spring. We're going to start some of these sugar babies and our milk jugs this winter. So that hopefully we can plant out plants much sooner next spring. 
from there, our little strawberry plant is putting out new growth. That's good. Maybe he will overwinter. This one as well. This Gara is looking fabulous. So I don't even remember if I did this on camera, but this rose is supposed to be a bush, but no matter what I do, it just is growing in these long canes and wants to vine. So I went ahead and I'm going to try training it up onto the porch, which means that instead of it filling in this whole corner, this corner was, was empty. So I went ahead and I planted one, two, three Gara. I have a Gara here and a Gara here and a Gara here. So it will just continue this Gara snake throughout the cone flowers. And some of the cone flowers are still looking fabulous. And the few salvia that I did not pull before I went on my cruise are like the best salvia in the whole garden. This is what they looked like last year when I let them grow over here. I tried transplanting them across the way. None of these look this good. So maybe they just like this area. I'm going to let some grow over here next year with the gara and the coneflowers and the salvia. I just want this to be a whole mess of like different English country craziness. With roses over the whole thing. Then the angelonia is looking okay. It's definitely time to cut it back. And some of these vincas still vincan. There's another super tunia. Go through and pull those out. This one mum bloomed the earliest and he is gone. And then we start getting into the winter plants. So let's break over here. We've got our hydrangea here that's looking okay. My pin cushions are still doing great. I'm hoping they'll come back. Salvia. Supertunia, Supertunia, baby kale. These are lambs here that we transplanted. One little leaf of early in the spring. They look fabulous. So I think next year, this bed specifically, I didn't do much this year besides transplant things from other areas of my garden. So hoping all of these things will come back and then we'll keep filling in with other things next year. And hopefully the salvia will come back. But I did go ahead and plant a bunch of coneflower seeds up throughout here as well. So if we could just get some more things going. And then starting to lose its leaves. But the wisteria vine is really starting to go around the tree. So hopefully we'll have a really strong show from the wisteria plant in the spring. I'm going to go ahead and pop back up by the pansies so I can show you the pansies and their best vantage point, right, Betty? Yeah, let's go. All right, so if you caught the pansy video, these babies were tiny when I planted them, and they are filling out and blooming. Just did some kales. But these, I mean, I planted a couple types of pansies, but these burgundy ones, y'all, they are just going insane. They're so pretty. So pretty. I love them. I think they're just going to keep going throughout the winter months and the spring. And we'll just see. We'll just see how they do. This is the first time I've planted them in the ground and mass like this. And so far, I love it. So then down on the other side of this super tunia, we have the cotton candy mix. And they are gorgeous mix of blues and pinks and purples so pretty and a few more baby kales i love them this whole little area should be really pretty come spring and i think right maybe back through here i'm not sure i have tulips and ranunculuses left to plant before it gets out of time to plant. So we'll see. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do tulips here 
or ranunculus here and tulips back here maybe. I'm not sure. I'm still trying to decide, but come across the way. This hydrangea has one bloom that is taking 12 years to bloom, so I don't know if it's ever going to make it. And then our kales and cabbages and our blue pansies. These were much smaller than the burgundy ones, so they are doing great. They're just not as great as the burgundy. But you know, they've got a whole winter to grow. They'll probably stall for a while and then they'll pick back up in spring. Cleaned out and divided a bunch off this lamb's ear. He looks great. More of the cotton candy pansies. And then my favorite moms, they looked fabulous. I need to come in and deadhead all those spent blooms because you can see there are a whole other layer of blooms in there if they make it before the freeze gets them. Crossing my fingers. I really want them to bloom again. And then across the way. So I planted up these planters with mums and they still look okay, but I'm thinking about when I pull these mums and plant them out in the landscape, maybe putting cabbages in there. We'll see. I may just leave them empty. Maybe I'll put some ornaments or something non-plant wise. And then more blue pansies and a little trio of cabbage and kale. I love it so much, so much. My pentas are still looking like pentas. And you, <laughs> you might've caught the video where I literally blew all these leaves out. I did leave them in the garden cause it's so, it's getting cold at night, like not freezing, but it's getting cold. These Laura Pad Lum bushes, like, they are getting so big. And look, all the new growth is that light pink this time of year. And they had pretty flowers on them. They're still pretty, but I love how they're doing. The butterfly bush is doing good. The roses are doing good, but not nearly as good as the one by the sheds. They, these ones up here, regardless, I've fertilized them the same way, have not bloomed in a while. <laughs> the one down by the shed is still going strong. Some of my foxglove are still foxgloving. Iris all through here are growing strong, so they'll be beautiful in the spring. These mums, these are ones that I planted last year, and they still, uh, they were beautiful, but they're kind of done. And the pintas around this tree never did as well as the ones down there, but but they're still there. I've never had pintas come back, but the tag said that they would in my zone, so we'll see. These super tunias are, they're trying. And I'll tell you, I move this thing back every couple whatevers, and it's always turning. It's so weird. Another rose. Grew quite a bit. Those will be beautiful next year. And that's really it. We'll keep going, but down here, salvia. We've got some peonies and gomfrina and foxglove. Like these foxglove that are still leaves, they should come back next year since they're biannuals. This was their first year and we should have some beautiful big foxgloves. I need to cut the peonies back to the ground and then I will ice them every week so that they'll bloom. But I think next year I'm going to do something different around this tree because I tried begonias two years running and two years running, I've had nothing around this tree. So cross our fingers. My Vitex down here is doing great. And that's it. That's the whole garden. Now I did think about redoing my window boxes for fall, but again, the girl just ran out of money. So Sometimes you do what you can do with what you got.
and I still have a lot more than a lot of people. So I'm very happy this season with how my gardens turned out. Maybe I'll have to put through a whole like season of my garden because this is its second year. So year two, I will link below, but I did a whole blog post on start to finish a full year for the first year of my garden from literally blank dirt to what it looked like at the end of last year. So maybe I'll do another one for year two. Either way, I will be back in December and we will see what it looks like once the cold has really set in. So I will see you then. Bye.